Hello. Today we're working on the seventh activity of the parameters chapter in Learn to Code 2. This activity is called Two Experts. So this is a challenge activity and the instructions say we should solve this puzzle using our knowledge of initialization, parameters, and other skills in our coding tool belt. And just to remind ourselves what are parameters, uh, this is the name of an input value to a function or a method used in the definition of the function. And then it gives us an example that says there's a function named move which takes a single parameter distance, which is an integer, and distance will tell us how many tiles we want to move uh, our character. Okay? Um, and also, if we read a little bit down in here further, it says to solve this challenge, we're going to need two experts working together. Each needs to pick different locks and so on. And uh, then there's a reminder to uh, tell us that types are, in fact, custom types are just blueprints for instances. And once we have a type, like our type expert, we can make as many instances of those as we want to um, and just by initializing them. And usually you give them a different name for each one of your instances. So we might have, you know, um, you know, expert one, expert two, or lock expert, or uh, fixing expert, or something like that. If they have different, uh, uh, if we want to have different experts. Okay, so um, let's take a look at this puzzle here. I'll pinch out to zoom, and um, I'm going to run the puzzle here a couple of times just to see if this configuration of gems changes each time. In this case there are four gems and there's one here on this front row and then there are three of them on this uh, middle-ish, three of them right back here on this middle-ish row. And let's run this again here. Uh, okay, yeah, so this is one of those puzzles where we can have gems put in random locations but it looks like where these white wireframes show up is all along this row right here. I'll run it again. Yeah, so they all pop up uh, somewhere along this row uh, right in here. One more time. Okay, so we'll keep that in mind uh, when we clean up the gems on this back row. And it looks like uh, we are going to have to place a couple experts on here at least, maybe two or three, and one of them is going to need to be on this row right here. It's going to need to be here, here, somewhere on this row so that we can uh, clean up this gem at zero, zero, and also move down here to the purple and the blue locks because we will need to make these purple and blue lo uh, platforms, the blue platform come down a couple and the purple platform come up a couple so that if we put a another expert over here uh, he, he can clean up all the gems on this row right in here. Okay? So, uh, also putting an expert somewhere on this row, hopefully by this yellow, uh, yellow lock, will let us lower these yellow platforms down so that the expert can get over here to work on the blue lock. All right. So let's put an expert, um, let's put an expert right here, and let's put an expert over here. This expert over here will be able to work the yellow lock and this expert right here will be able to collect the gem and then move over and work on the purple lock. All right, so two instances of experts here. So let's say uh, let expert and I'm going to call this one expert yellow lock because he's going to be the one who's back here by this yellow lock. Uh, is an instance of expert. So we just do that. And let's go ahead and place him right away at the coordinates, uh, column zero, row four. 
So we'll say world.place, we'll choose this one here, we'll set his direction, and the item that we're placing is expert yellow lock, and he'll be facing, oh I don't know, uh, let's just say north, we'll try that and we'll fix that when we need to, and we said this was at column zero, row four, which is this location right here. All right, and then let's place another expert here, so let's say let expert, this one we'll call purple and blue lock. Okay, equals an instance of expert. So now we have two experts that we've initialized. And this one will place world.place and the item is expert purple and blue lock facing, well, uh, if this one's facing north, then this one we want to be facing down the row, so something like west. Uh, but I doubt that that's right, but we'll fix that. And the location here is at column zero, row zero. So let's just see what happens if we uh, initialize these experts and place them, and we'll try to figure out if we need to change the way they're facing. Alright, uh, well this one's facing the right direction, the yellow one, um, and but the purple and blue needs to be facing totally the other way, so uh, instead of west, the opposite of west is east, so uh, let's try that again. Okay, there we go, looking good. Uh, so the first thing we'll do is let's get our purple uh, expert to go ahead and collect his gem and move over so that he's in front of the purple lock ready to do some work there. Okay, so expert purple and blue lock, you want to collect your gem and then expert purple and blue lock, you want to move some distance, one, two, three move three, and then we'll have him turn to the left, expert purple and blue lock, turn to the left so that he's ready to work on that purple lock when it's time. And then uh, after, uh, let's get him to raise, or yeah, to raise the purple platform. It looks like he needs to raise it too. Okay, so expert, purple and blue lock dot turn lock up and we want him to move it up so that's true and the number of times is two okay now when that's the case after he gets it up to let's just make sure that that works I'll run this fast faster okay collected the gem turn and he's raising the purple platform that's good. Now he'll also need to raise the or lower the blue platform so that the second expert can get over to work on that but the only way he can get to the blue platform is if the yellow expert first does his lock right down so he'll uh, he needs to lower the platform with the expert on it, this platform right here. He needs to lower that so that the, uh, so that, that expert can continue on to the blue, uh, to the blue one. So we're going to say expert yellow lock, you need to turn your lock down one. Okay, and then our expert purple and blue lock should be able to turn to the right and move forward, expert purple and blue lock, one, two, three spaces, three tiles, so that he's sitting there in front of the blue, and then in front of the blue lock, and then let's go ahead and have him do that. Expert purple and blue lock, you go ahead and turn your lock down, so this will be false, up is false, and turn it down two times. Okay, let's try that out. Uh, 
All right, he collects his gem, turns. He turns the purple one up twice. That's good, so that helped out the yellow expert. Now the yellow expert helps out the blue, purple and blue, and purple and blue makes it down here and turns the blue lock. Okay, that looks great, and why that's great is because now this yellow expert down here has a clear path that he can clean up this whole row. Okay, he can clean up that whole row, and we saw that there could be any number of of uh, gems on this row here so we should think about that a little bit um, let's go ahead and say uh, maybe we'll have this expert just clean up this whole row no matter how many gems are on there so we can do something like this we can say while the yellow expert is not blocked while the expert yellow lock is blocked while is not blocked then we want to have him keep um, collecting gems and moving forward so that's going to have him just take care of this whole uh, this whole row right in front of him but before we do that here this is what I need to do I need to say turn to the left turn to the left so that he's facing down the row okay now in here let's go ahead and say as long as you're not blocked we want to say uh, collect gems and move forward something like that okay so where there's this function we'll make here we can do that right in front of this we can say actually I'll make it up here a little bit higher right after we uh, create our experts we'll say funk collect gem and move forward and all we wanted to do there is every time he's just going to because he's right now under a gem so we'll say if expert yellow lock is on a gem then go ahead and collect that so expert yellow lock dot collect gem Okay, and even if, if he is or if he isn't, after that he's going to move forward. Expert yellow lock dot move forward. Okay, uh, I'm going to rename this here uh, co collect uh, instead of collect gem and move forward. I'm going to make it specific to this expert here. So expert yellow collect gem and move forward. Okay. So when we call this down here, we're going to say expert yellow collect gem, collect gem, and move forward. All right, uh, let's give this a try, and I'll say uh, maybe uh, step through my code. We'll see if this works. Okay, so we're initializing our yellow expert and our purple and blue expert then the expert purple and blue walks forward collects the gem and walks forward and raises the purple platform up to gets it lined up for the yellow expert later and then he uh, the yellow expert turns the lock down to help out the purple and blue lock expert he turns to the left and moves forward three so that he can work on the blue lock He's going to turn the blue lock down twice. That gets all these platforms lined up so that now the yellow lock expert can, oh, turn the wrong way. Turn the wrong way. Uh, should have been a turn right there. Turn right. Okay, good. And uh, let's go ahead and run the code faster. I think that was going to work great at that point. Okay, this is good. This time we have one, two, we've got six gems out there that we have to collect. So this will be a good test of our while loop here. It says as long as our yellow expert is not blocked to the front, keep collecting gems and moving forward. There we go. So he's collecting a gem, moves forward. If he's not on a gem, he doesn't, and he just moves forward. Excellent. So we got all the way to the end. Okay. 
All right, so just to review here, um, the, the big important point of, of this activity is that we can initialize two or more any number of experts we want or any number of characters we want. We saw that in a previous activity where we made a, a big army of characters. Um, but you know, it's, it's once you have a type, a type is just a custom type, you can create as many instances as, though, as you need in order to solve a problem. So here, for example, we did two of them. Here was we created an instance of type expert, and we call that expert yellow lock because his job was to take care of the yellow lock. And we created another instance of expert here, who we called expert purple and blue lock because his job was to handle all things related to the purple and blue locks. Okay, all right. Uh, that's great. Um, we used a lot of different functions as well along with their parameters. We used our move function which took a distance parameter and we used our turn lock up which took a boolean value true if we wanted to turn the lock up, false if we wanted it to, to go down, and the number of times we wanted that lock to be turned. And there was also this nice function up here with parameters place where place takes, I think, four different parameters, the item you're gonna place, the direction you want that item to face, and the column and the row where you'd like them placed. Okay, so these are functions, these are the parameters inside. They act as inputs that you send in to help the function uh, customize it so that it does uh, a better job for you. All right, good job everybody, we'll see you next time.